Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm responding to five things that destroy your testosterone by Dr. Axe per request from one of you guys. And I just think it's funny, like a testosterone video has to be by Dr. Axe, like some super manly sounding person, like Mr. Hammer and Dr. Axe get together to make people feel good about manliness. Anyway, positive things to be said first. He has a lot of points that are pretty basic in terms of exercise and sleep. I totally agree with those, but this is like a 40 minute long video and I'm pretty sure it was sent to me to respond to the diet section. So we're gonna do that. So I wanna share with you the ideal diet in order to boost testosterone levels. And he says he's using research. So we're gonna see uh, what claims have research and what claims don't. Of course, looking at a bunch of research ourselves. You wanna take adrenals, kidneys, uh, testes especially. For, for men that want to build uh, build testosterone. So you want to take organ meats, especially testes. So we'll mostly keep it to diet, but he also has some other interesting claims in terms of supplements, as well as attitude. Some research there I think is really interesting to respond to. So let's just get into it. Who is Dr. Josh Axe? Well, he's somebody that I've seen in the low carb community for years. He has a book on keto stuff. And generally, you know, I'm not agreeing with claims around that that he makes. To be fair, his site does have Mediterranean stuff on there as well. Not sure if it's just in more recent years, but that's new to me. And he has about 2.3 million subscribers on YouTube. And he's a doctor of natural medicine as well as a chiropractor and a nutritionist. So that's sort of where he's coming from. But where's he coming from in terms of motivations to raise testosterone? Well, he covers some of the basic concerns. On today's episode, I'm gonna be going through research that shows how testosterone levels in men have been on a consistent decline over the past several decades. What this means for our future as a species and what you can do to naturally boost your testosterone. Talks about things associated with lower testosterone, like lower muscle mass, lower libido slash sex drive, etc. But then he nails it home. <laughs> Final nail in the coffin with this definitely scary statistic. Men with low testosterone levels had an 88% increase in a risk of death compared with those who had normal levels. Did you hear that? And that first chunk of the video is largely about, you know, getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise, but then we hit that diet section. Here he is. The ideal diet in order to boost testosterone levels. And it's going to be this, it's gonna be high in protein and moderate in fat and carbs, okay? You wanna make sure those carbs don't get too high. That will absolutely tank your testosterone levels. Okay, we'll talk about carbs and fat and some studies on that in a second, but how much protein is he talking about here? Most men, you should be aiming towards at least your body weight in protein. So for instance, for myself, if I weigh uh, 170 pounds or so, okay? Uh, I wanna be trying to get about 170 grams of protein a day. I mean, that's, that, that's really ideal. 40 grams of protein four times a day. Yes, that's an absurd amount of protein. It's to the point where your own protein farts might put you into a toxic state that might lower your testosterone. But what form is he suggesting you get this protein in? Well, we can skip ahead a little bit. And well, some of you probably already guessed it. And then you wanna eat organ meats and eat red meat. Uh, so organ meats like liver are going to be good red meat now chicken and eggs are also fantastic and wild caught fish but you really want to focus on red meat yes red meat and organ meats especially he says focus on red meat and just to you know blow this idea out of the water we can look to people that eat no red meat and they also dodge other animal products like eggs etc they're called vegans and from this study they had higher total testosterone and equivalent free testosterone so that's a point against his idea is there any other evidence that slamming down meat is going to raise your testosterone. Well, we have this study in young men and it found no statistically significant difference between low versus high meat consumption and testosterone. In fact, just in terms of trends, the highest total testosterone was in the lowest meat consumption quarter. And the study even looked at people that ate versus didn't eat organ meats, amazingly, just coincidentally. And it turns out, again, no statistically significant difference, but the trend is slightly worse for people that are eating organ meats, like 4% lower total testosterone. Now, and the main statistically significant finding of that study was that higher processed meat from this chart was associated with worse sperm quality. Anyway, we can move on to another study. What happens if people just replace meat with something like the ultimate soy boy beta food, tofu? Well, this was a crossover trial, so the same group of people ate different things. How did their testosterone change? 
from meat versus tofu. Oh, well, guess what? It didn't, there was no change. Fun anecdote, vegan bodybuilder Brian Turner ate one pound of soy per day over several weeks and his testosterone raised from 596 to 698. But just to slam his protein idea down the drain, uh, we have this meta-analysis and review that looked at 27 different trials and it concluded that high protein, low carb diets greatly decreased resting and post-exercise total testosterone. Ouch. And this isn't new stuff. We've seen this in studies you know, back to the 80s, probably even before. Well, it wasn't a big study. This study found that testosterone concentrations were consistently higher after 10 days on a higher carbohydrate diet than during a high protein diet. Okay, you wanna make sure those carbs don't get too high. That will absolutely tank your testosterone levels. And so what might be happening here? Well, this study itself might have one of the answers and that could be cortisol. They say that cortisol concentrations were consistently lower during during the higher carbohydrate diet, so less stress hormone, than during the high protein diet, which had more stress, I guess. It might be the case that cortisol has a testosterone lowering effect looking to this other study. It is the case that cortisol into the circulation at rest will result in reduced blood testosterone levels. But remember, he said getting your carbs too high will tank your testosterone levels. Uh, it doesn't appear to be the result from these studies. Wait, so do carbs equal manliness? I don't think it's that simple. He did mention also that you should eat fat, and it seems to me, looking through the research, that it has to do with balance here. If you're not getting enough of any of these things, whether it's fat or carbs, or really calories in general, perhaps most importantly, then your body's probably gonna clock your testosterone down a little bit. And this meta-analysis found that in trials on calorie restriction for normal weight people, more often than not, it lowered testosterone, but in obese people, restriction raised testosterone. And I do just have to once again echo that these high protein, lower carb diets are associated from this meta-analysis with increased all-cause mortality. And just from an anecdotal perspective, you know, it seems to be all these guys like Joe Rogan who are representing Butcher Box and slamming down protein that end up going on the hormone replacement therapy. You know, that's an anecdote, but you know, the science is sort of supporting it here. You know, previously the carnivore MD Saladino said that on his ketogenic diet, his testosterone started going down and down. This is my testosterone was kind of going down. Right now it's around seven or 800. I've been on, I've included carbohydrates in my diet for the last two and a half years. But at that point it was going 450, 500, significantly lower. And because of that and other reasons, he quit his carnivore diet. And also in my no longer carnivore videos video, I spotlighted another guy whose testosterone crashed on that type of diet. Again, it's based around literally the type of food that he's telling you to eat, red meat. And my testosterone, it took a nose dive. It went from 1,004 nanograms each deciliter to the 550s and my cortisol levels were off the roof. To be fair, he's not telling you to go on a carnivore diet. We'll get into his other recommendations in a second, but how much does this fat versus carbs really matter? Well, we do have a trial here. It's a three month randomized trial where you had people either go on a higher carb or lower carb diet, neither to super extreme levels, but with both groups getting enough calories. And that's where I think the difference here is and why they didn't see a drop or any major disparity. However, it is is worth mentioning that while they weren't statistically significantly different, the higher carb group actually saw about a 12% increase in testosterone, despite eating about 300 less calories, but larger study needed anyway. Here he is mentioning that you can actually eat some carbs. It's so refreshing nowadays. The carbs you consume, you want those to be typically very nutrient dense and lower glycemic ideally. So the ideal carbs would be for men that wanna uh, build testosterone, it's gonna be berries, such as blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Uh, it's also going to be um, sweet potato, it's gonna be rice, maybe a little bit of oatmeal, and uh, potentially something like potatoes. However, even though these are foods that I support the consumption of, he still doesn't cite research saying, yes, this is connected to testosterone. No, and so that's just another claim he's making not being backed up by science. I wish more people would just cite stuff when they make a claim. But to back him up a bit on berries and other high antioxidant foods from this study, various plant compounds may be effective in delaying age-related testosterone decline through the protection of testicular cells. And it's a stretch, but cyanidin present in blueberries, improved expression of key testosterone-making proteins in mice, 
blasted with endocrine disrupting heavy metal cadmium. Sorry mice, but more research definitely needed. Anyway, he has some other supplements he does mention. And you also wanna be getting liver, you wanna take adrenals, kidneys, uh, testes especially. For, for men that want to build uh, build testosterone. So you want to take organ meats, especially testes. Eat testicles to improve testosterone. This is just absolute pseudoscience. And even this beef product seller mentions that testicles don't store testosterone. An entire kilogram of raw beef testicles contains less than 1% of how much an adult man produces in a day. And 98% of that is digested. So it's not happening, pseudoscience. The next one here is fenugreek. Fenugreek increases testosterone levels by up to 46% in men, according to a clinical study. Yeah, fenugreek is one that I have been aware of for a while. And from this meta-analysis of, you know, just four trials, we do see that fenugreek extract supplementation increases testosterone levels in men, which is really interesting. And it is worth mentioning though, you know, getting your testosterone higher could increase male pattern baldness. It could also, you know, increase benign prostate hyperplasia, which is, you know, your prostate growing from dihydrotestosterone over time. Both of those are from that byproduct. Anyway, he also mentioned zinc. And I will say from the research, it does appear that if you are low in zinc, that taking it can increase testosterone. And even in this study in men with hypogonadism, which is lower testosterone, it did help to take zinc. So I would say there's definitely legitimacy to that. But then we have to ask what other things can actually be done here? What are the main things that are going on? And in men with hypergonadism, we see sort of a profile of comorbidities, whether we're talking about obesity, especially you know, mid waist circumference being larger, as well as type two diabetes and heart disease. And so anything you can do to reverse those, also hypertension, which is high blood pressure, you're doing better. And that could be a connection for the vegan rates being higher of total testosterone, because yeah, from studies like this one, they have way lower high blood pressure, way lower diabetes risk. And of course we know about the trials straight up, you know, improving the state of people with severe heart disease, like the Esselstyn trial. And of course the Broad study, a randomized control trial that didn't add exercise or restrict calories, which they claim to be the largest weight loss seen at six and 12 months for that type of trial. So yeah. But a final study he added, which I think is just a great topic is the attitude here. And in particular, a study showing that in a sort of simulated indoor rowing race where they manipulate who the actual winner is and then they like put it up on the screen. They saw this, an increase in testosterone in the alleged winners and a decrease in those who were told that they lost, which I think is hilarious because it's not even based in reality of who won. But overall, the men that thought they were winners had testosterone levels that were 14.46 higher than their deflated opponents. Another hilarious finding is that the people who won had a higher likeliness of like approaching women in hypothetical social situations. It's like, I'm a winner, let's go score. <laughs> However, I would love to see this repeated because you might have heard of that study where if you assume a sort of dominant position, your testosterone increases. It turns out a much larger attempt to replicate that study found no such testosterone increase. So any of these studies I wanna see duplicated, replicated, but either way, this is likely a transient effect that wouldn't really have much to do with your general testosterone level. Like, I don't think this is lasting for a week. And that's the testosterone you should really be concerned about when you're talking about a risk of mortality like you did in the beginning. I'll also say if winning or losing something really has an effect on like your self-perception and your hormones, we might wanna do some like deeper reflection, deeper work and try to become more secure in ourselves. But he goes and makes a little bit of a stretch from this research, here he is. Now let's say you're married, okay? And you're a woman watching this and you've got a husband. If you say things to him to deflate his self-esteem and make him feel like he's not a winner, that he's not a provider, that he's not a real man, that he's not doing things to provide for the family, you destroy his testosterone and literally take years off of his life likely in creating disease in his body. 
Okay, so I agree that a toxic partnership could be bad for your health, but stretching from like a simulated rowing thing to like never injure the masculinity of your male partner because he might die earlier is a bit of a stretch there, Mr. Axe. This guy should partner with Axe Body Spray and do like a testosterone campaign. I feel like it would do really well. Anyway, in the end, his main dietary recommendation was essentially to slam animal protein in the form of red meat, a class two carcinogen, as well as organic and meats despite there being no scientific basis for this, if anything, a pretty strong scientific basis to not do this. You know, with that meta-analysis of 27 trials showing that when people are given a high protein diet, their testosterone lowers, that's the key here. But again, he had some good main claims in terms of sleep and exercise that we didn't even bother with. So it's hard for me to just, just criticize him and not say he did that well, so. But I just can't help but laugh about this whole idea of like, Men can never be challenged at all because they might die of like low testosterone. Like, like I'm a winner, big boy winner with my high man juice levels. Like, it's just kind of funny. And I think you know, if you're in a cycle of insecurity and constantly trying to be more manly, like that's probably gonna harm you in its own way anyway. But yeah, balance, balancing macronutrients, having a balanced lifestyle, getting out of obesity, et cetera, that's what gets rid of something like hypogonadism if you're talking about just dietary lifestyle interventions at least. And yeah, please don't eat like 170 to 200 grams of red meat and other animal protein per day. Not only is it horrible for the environment in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, land use, water use, which I have several videos on. Oh uh, yeah, it's also bad for these animals that obviously want to live. Like, please just don't. I know asking people doesn't work, but anyway, let me know down below what you thought about this video. And of course, as usual, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.